everyone. Um, I'm Michelle Dubois, State Representative for the 10th Plymouth District, and this is um, sept one of September's edition of the public access cable show that I host called Good Government with Michelle Dubois. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the ballot questions that will be coming up in November on November 6th. There are three and we're going to start in reverse order and number three, um, I'm a yes on three, and number three is about um, public accommodations for transgender people. And we are lucky enough today to have Domingo and Vernon here to talk a little bit about question three, the history of question three, how it personally affects their family, and what we need to do to make sure that this civil right doesn't get um, overturned at the ballot box. So um, to start off, I'd just like to say thank you very much, Vernon and Beryl, for being here. And maybe you can tell a little bit about yourself and the background on question three and how it all started way back in 2011 or before. Yeah, just briefly, I mean, question three is uh, on the ballot is a really important question. It's the attempt to take away rights from transgender people, yes. which were voted on uh, in law in 2016. And yes, you're right, D. This started way back, way before 2016. Actually, our um, entry into this uh, area was when the legislators, Massachusetts legislators first voted to um, approve the protections of uh, transgender people by adding gender identity uh, to, the, to the characteristics of the protected uh, uh, characteristics. Protected uh, class. But it was particularly just, it was only really in housing and education and uh, in um, Forgetting the other one now. There's hate crime um, yes. and employment. And employment and so on. But just basically to stop discrimination against people who are transgender, uh, transgender people. And when they uh, voted this, there was a discussion to include public accommodation in that particular, uh, at that time. But there was... Uh, lots of opposition to that because I think there was just not they didn't a know. really good understanding yeah. of what it all meant. So transgender people certainly had protections for a while, but only in those categories I had mentioned, employment and, and housing, etc. So it was really important for, for the transgender community that we didn't just sit back and say, okay, that's okay and that's enough. We really won't need need for that community to be protected in all spheres of life, public, mm -hmm. public arenas, places like hospitals, places like the movies and restaurants, right. um, just everyday places that we all go and where we do our business. So with more push and more effort by many people, including yourself, um, there was a, a, a bill then filed in both the Senate and the House to include gender identity and include public accommodations. Right. You know. I was very proud to vote yes on that. Yeah, we, we remember that. We actually sat in the gallery and we uh, applauded you. I don't know if you know it, we were high up there. Yeah. Uh, when you we supported that because it's a really important issue. For us personally, we are the parents of a transgender son who's 30 years old and doing very well. Came out to us about nine years ago. And so this is both personal and social. Right. So we see it in effect as providing protections for transgender, not just for us, but for that entire set of communities. Mm -hmm. We do not want anyone to be discriminated against right. on the basis of race, ethnicity, uh, uh, sexual orientation, or in this case, gender identity. So it's all part of that big package. We should not have a society where discrimination is allowed against a class of people. Right, in any way, shape, or form. Absolutely. The way it was explained to me is right now, prior to us voting yes for public accommodation for transgender people, the way, um, the, why this question was so important um, and this bill was so important is I was told that say you're a waitress, um, a restaurant can't discriminate against you if you're transgender in the hiring process. So you can, if you're transgender at that point before we voted this law into effect, you could work at the restaurant. But then when you came back at night to eat there, um, before this law was in effect, the owner could deny you service. Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. So it's not about the bathrooms. I mean, it's yeah. about the bathrooms, but it's really not. It's really about every single day life for people who are transgender. Can they get services that they want? Or can people deny them services just because they're prejudiced um, against people that are transgender? Is that how you see it? 
That is exactly how we see it. And we feel it's important to, uh, that we speak about this more so that the uh, folks understand it really is about just going about your business, trying to uh, do what all of us do every single day, go out to eat, go see a movie, go to, you know, using the MBTA and not feel that because of your gender identity, you can, you can potentially be discriminated against. We've done so much learning since, as Vernon said, we are parents of a transgender son who's now 30, came out to us nine years ago. In the nine years, we've learned so much and we realized that these are a lot of challenges that transgender people face oh, sure. uh, out in the, in, in the real world. And um, the, the numbers are staggering when you look at the statistics of people who have been discriminated against at work, fired from their jobs when they've come out as transgender, people who have been denied housing, um, people who've been denied access to a restroom right. because they are just based on their gender identity. Mm -hmm. um, and for our son, it was so important that we, want, we believe that everybody should be able to feel safe Right. and to be able to go where they want to go and be able to um, uh, do what they feel they want to do for themselves. My son wants to go out to clubs, etc. And before the public accommodations, it was a little difficult to go out to clubs if you couldn't uh, use a bathroom right. while you're there. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, or somebody might deny you the use of a bathroom, where mm -hmm. do you go? Um, it, it was um, a mission for us to really make sure that folks understand the challenges uh, the trans community face every single day. Uh, fortunately, of course, now in Massachusetts, we, do we have laws that protect, us, protect uh, people, uh, transgender people, since 2016 right. in these arenas. And so it was sort of um, with dismay when we discovered that there was um, a petition to have a referendum question. Right, so it's a it's a it's a very complicated um, way that this got on. So the legislator legislature voted to um, include gender identity in the protected class with public accommodation, and then our constitution allows through a voter referendum to try to overturn laws that were passed in the legislature within a certain amount of time by referendum, and that's what you're looking at when you go into the voting book on November, November 6th. Um, the question is, do you approve of the law summarized below, which was approved by the House of Representatives and the Senate on July 7th, 2016? And then the summary of the law more or less says, do we believe that gender identity, people that have um, a gender identity that, that is different from that they were born with, should they deserve the same rights as me and you walking around? And I think when you're sitting home back and you're thinking about this issue, a lot of um, false arguments are out there to try to make people afraid. Um, but you know, public bathrooms, there are stalls and you know. Exactly. It, and it, and, and the, the poor woman who got killed in the uh, Burger King bathroom on the side of the highway, that was just a crazy person in the bathroom, sure. born a man, dressed like a man, hiding in a woman's bathroom, had nothing. So we're not seeing these types of assaults that um, people that are trying to bring up fear in our society um, are trying to get you to vote no on. That's right. This is, a, and, I, and this is important to you because of your son, but it's also important to you because you've experienced discrimination and the ugliness of it firsthand because you grew up in South Africa, right? Exactly, we did not have to vote in South Africa, both of us there. So we see this, the, the, the ballot issue is a, is a civil rights issue. It is a civil rights you issue. Know. And um, initially, this country was based on white men having the power exclusively. And that is enlarged over the course of time to white women and to African Americans. And, so. and now we see this also as part of that inclusive. So um, we're really pushing very hard to make sure people understand that. One of the things that I'm reminded of is that during the civil rights movement in the 1960s, it was never really about the fountains, the water fountains. Right. It was never about the water fountains. It was a larger issue. So those groups who talk about the bathroom as the bathroom, it's not about the bathroom. 
It's about having access to things that society offers to all of us. So back in the 60s, and I was born 73, but I've read history. <laughs> so back in the 60s, they made this whole argument that the reason we have separate water fountains for white people and people of color is because I don't know why. They said that people of color had different germs or something. They tried to make people fearful. That's right. Um, and so they tried to use this fear to make people come down on the wrong side of history, really, right. and yeah. try to get them to want to keep segregation uh, because of these false um, arguments. Yeah. And so this is just another um, point in time on our fight to make sure that every human being on this planet is treated fairly, respectfully, and is um, able to access the same services as other people, right? Is that part of it? Absolutely. Fairness, of course, equality, because that's really what it comes down to. So everyone is treated equally. Transgender people um, are just like anybody else. That's There's right. no difference. That's um, right. And as you mentioned earlier, a, a person's gender identity, if it doesn't match your the, the sex that you were born with, it doesn't make you less human you're no. still a human being you're yes. you're presenting a gender and in in fact men we've learned uh, over time that even a cisgender person somebody who is born a female sex is female their gender is female that's a cisgender person over time also can change and become more so it, it's so fluid it is a gender identity is fluid and um but it's it i think people there's just the, it's. I think it's just not knowing, not, right. not having the information, um, uh, that might make people more fearful. Make mm -hmm. people think this is something different, um, or that and and transgender people are not asking for special treatment. No, nope. they're asking for just equal and fair treatment. So as I see it, so a gender identity a person with a um, different gender identity that they were born, they go into the store, they want to buy a soda, they want to be able to say that they can go in the store and buy a soda and not have a clerk say, I'm not going to sell you yeah. soda because you look different or you're, you're not worthy of this soda. I mean, we're not talking about um, forcing any person to just open up their private doors of their homes. To, exactly. We're not asking for anything other than in a public space, every human being should be able to be served um, and it shouldn't come down to the person that's at the register deciding based on how you or I look if they're going to sell us a soda or not, right? right. That's right. really what it is. And the fact that this law has been in place since 2016 and we haven't had a collapse in our society. Right. It's gone perfectly well. Right. So why why raise that issue? Right. So it, it's it's very uh, upsetting in that way. That it's another Trump agenda point mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, where mm -hmm. they they're trying to drive this hate into our community and, and trying fear. to divide us, and they're using this as just one aspect of trying to drive that hate and fear into our hearts. And mm -hmm. we have to say no to that yeah, by absolutely. voting yes on three. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Absolutely. Yes on that's, three. That's what we're doing. We, right. uh, that's what we're trying to do is advocate for yes on three, advocate for people in the trans community um, as, as parents and as allies to the, to the transgender community. That's uh, where we stand. And we hope that folks will you know, uh, really educate themselves on the, on the ballot question too, so that they would, on ballot question number three, so that they would know um, why this is so important. And we, we always say that transgender people have been around for centuries, eons, right. part of our human race, and uh, in fact, they've used bathrooms right. uh, all along, and uh, there really isn't an issue. We just feel like it's a non-issue. It is a non-issue. Because, you know, I don't have any children, but every single one of my friends do, and I love kids. I have nieces and nephews, and to a person, no one I know lets their children go into a public bathroom by themselves unless they're old enough that it's safe for them no matter who's in there, right? Sure. So it isn't, 
this fear that we're hearing, um, it's unfounded, really. And like you said, it's, and the law's been in action since 2016, and nothing bad has happened. Absolutely. And the groups that have supported the law of groups like the YMCA, right, good Patriots. people, right. These are major, all the major health organizations, uh, program sports health, clubs. sports clubs, the Red Sox. Right. So that gives a lot of power to say these are big time, very responsible organizations, right. and they support the fact that mm -hmm. we have rights for transgender people Be in the law. Right, because the rights are important. And the psychological damage you can do to people by saying, no, we're not going to serve you, mm -hmm. is so much worse mm -hmm. than um, just saying, okay, just like you're a human being, if you want to go into a grocery store, you want to get your hair done, they shouldn't be able to say no to you because you're transgender. They shouldn't be able to say no to you because you're a person of a color. They shouldn't be able to say no to you because you are a woman. These are all things that maybe in the past they were able to say no to, and we decided as a society we're a civil society, and we want to make sure that everybody that lives here feels safe and welcome. Sure. And so I see that you're doing a lot of locations where you go, um, you're going to be at Sunday, September 16th, Democratic City Committee breakfast right, yes. with Attorney General Moore Healy, exactly. who supports Yes on Three. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then on Monday, September 17th, you're going to be at the Bridgewater Public Library at 6.30 p.m. And then on Tuesday, September 25th, you're going to be at the West Bridgewater, which is in this district's public library. That's Tuesday, September 25th um, at 6.30. So you're making these rounds. Sure. And when you go to these, and you have like 12 other ones up mm -hmm. here all in the area, when you go to these events to tell people about the Yes on Three campaign, what do you usually tell them? How does, do you have a, a normal pitch? Or what sure. do you usually say? Well, one of the things we say is it's a family story. It's about keeping families wholesome, and that's what really about America is about, and accepting our different parts of our family. Right. Okay. And we usually tell our story uh, because it, it, um, it's personal, and, and, then, and I think it, and it makes it real. So when we speak about uh, Micah coming out, our son, transgender son's name is Micah, um, we speak about how that felt for us in the beginning. This was nine years ago. Nine years ago, there wasn't much in the public world about transgender. Right. It was definitely sort of not talked about. And we never saw a news article or a magazine or even a television show about transgender people at that time. We felt pretty isolated and um, kind of um, worried that what is this really and how does this work and what's this going to mean for our son who was born uh, and assigned female at birth and we raised her as our daughter for him, uh, raised him as a daughter for 21 years. So it was a, a major shift for us to now um, start calling him him. Right. And he and have his new name, Micah, and getting used to having two sons instead of a son and a, and a daughter. But it helped, what helped us was meeting other parents of transgender children, which right. we did through the Greater Boston P Flag, which is the organization that um, supports its friends and families of transgender people. And they have support groups, and there's actually a support group in Easton. So we met sev uh, several fam uh, parents at that time, and it was just so, n so uh, helpful and right. um, comforting to know that we weren't alone. And we listened to their stories, and they listened to our story, and we could see similarities there. Not everybody's story is the same. But it was really good to know, and they were a little bit ahead of us, some of these parents. Oh, sure. So their kids have come out, say, a few years earlier. And their kids were doing fine, and they were living normal lives. <laughs> None of the worries that, that we had right. uh, really re was reflected in their experiences. And we said, you know, this, this could be OK. Right. But I think for, uh, we weren't, you know, I think our reaction wasn't uh, unusual. I think it was pretty typical for parents the first time they hear this um, from their child. But Micah was very patient with us. <laughs> Even though in the beginning we said, you know, we can't get our head around this. What does this mean? And right. Take some education. Yeah. And that's exactly why we go out to speak on these things. Right. We actually show, we have, we have a sl some slides. So we show our family, including Micah, we have permission from Micah to show him with, with us. Right. And, and we explain to people that, you know, 
for us even, there was a growing process, a learning process. And so we're hoping that these talks help people to, to gain some insight and right. want to learn more about it. We know it's, it's fairly new for some people, but if we can generate a sense that this is worthwhile for our democracy to embrace and to widen the tent for everyone, we've achieved a lot that way. Right, because um, what is it? You can't, we can't control how people want to live their lives or how they, how, how they can live to their full potential. What we can control is our reaction to it. So mm -hmm. we can react with hate or disgust or judgment or whatever we want. Um, or we can react with love and acceptance and understanding. And um, how do we want our society to go forward? And how do we want that individual to feel? I mean, I know that there are a lot of transgender people who have been alienated and treated poorly. We have um, a suicide rate as a result yes, of that. Um, and when it really comes down to it, um, if allowing someone to go to a store and buy a sandwich without a clerk that's being paid, maybe minimum wage, deciding if that person is going to be able to buy a sandwich or not, mm -hmm. that could be the tipping point for someone who's already struggling to live their real authentic selves and cause them to hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, there's more than just um, trying to keep the world the way any one person visualizes it. It's a world we share. So I say this because a lot of people at home probably don't have transgender people in their lives. And it was only recently that one of my friends and my constituent told me that um, their child is transitioning. And they were in a store and there was some comment, and it's funny because it was in like a, a convenience store. And there was somebody in line who made some negative comment about some news article in the paper, not to do with this question, but to do with transgender people. And my friend was feeling very uncomfortable with it. And the clerk behind the counter said, my grandson is transgender. Oh. And how dare you talk like this? Mm -hmm. And it made it, and that person must have been further along in the understanding. And it made my friend feel so much more comfortable that she wasn't alone in going through this process. And that your grandchild is still your grandchild no mm -hmm. matter what their gender identity is, right? And Absolutely. that's kind of what you're saying. Absolutely, yes, yes. exactly. But it actually has a cute little story about... Uh, Micah's grandma, that was because his mother. We're from South Africa originally. We were black South Africans, we didn't have the vote. Uh, I would, when Micah came out, I would speak to my, my mother on the phone every Thursday at nine. And as a grandmother, she'd always ask, how's Stephanie at that time doing? Mm -hmm. And how, does she have a boyfriend? I didn't know how to raise that right. with her. We actually flew to South Africa and we talked to her and she accepted it right off. And she was 83 years old. So it's not a matter of age. Because she loved her grandchild. She loved her grandchild. Exactly. And she continued to send birthday cards to Micah underlining to my grandson. Oh. Which yeah. is really, and we have some of those. Right. Because you want to make sure. And now that's love. Yes. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. And family, I mean, you know, people come out to their parents, we learned, usually last. Oh, my to gosh. Their yes. To their that's loved good ones. to know. They, they will come out to their friends and other folks that, but... Their loved ones are usually the last to know. So by the time we found out, Micah's, all of Micah's friends in Boston, where he was going to school, already knew. Right. <laughs> he had already lived as Micah with them. But Is that because they love you so much and they're afraid of the rejection? I, I think we think that that's part of it, that yeah. there's a fear of rejection, this worry that this is going to blow, you know, the right. gas, you're going to blow a gasket or something. And in some cases, it, that has happened for right. families and for people. Right. It's, and, and that's the sad part of it, that sometimes uh, they're not accepted. There's not acceptance. Uh, and, it, and sometimes it just takes time right. for families to come around. I mean, Micah has this, a brother. And our first worry was, well, how, what's he going to say? Right. What's your brother going to say? Micah said, I'm going to tell him. You don't have to tell him. I'll tell him. And that went really fine. Right. There was no issue. Right. <laughs> it was, uh, and the, uh, my uh, older son is married, and the wife, his wife, daughter-in-law, was fine right. with it, no, accepted right away. Now we have two grandkids, and all they know is Uncle Micah. Right, right. So I guess for me, um, I, 
there are tons of people that are voting yes already, right? Mm -hmm. Yes on three. I'm proud to have voted this into law because I really think we need to live in a civil society that respects everyone. But some people at home um, might be thinking, well, I don't know any transgender people, and -and so-and-so told me that this is hugely terrible, and I'm thinking about voting no. And so I just want to bring us back to the civil rights movements of the past. So Mm -hmm. there were some people way back when um, people of color got the vote. They had in their mind some convoluted idea that somehow the world was going to fall apart if that happened. And the world didn't fall apart. When women got the right to vote, people again thought, oh, women can't think politically. (laughs) And here I am as a state representative and, you know, Republican and Democrat, we have female leaders that have different political opinions but still are competent and can do that. And um, so when gay marriage came, we had people saying, oh, no, I don't know, it's going to ruin marriage. It hasn't ruined (laughs) marriage. Um, And so what it comes down to is even if, like you said, sometimes these type of new topics for certain people, they take a little while to figure it out. This isn't a question of the parent at home with the yes vote deciding that if their child decides to be transgender, this is just going to be easy for me. This is the person at home saying, regardless of if it's my child or someone else's child or someone that's just walking around, I want to make sure that every person in our society is treated fairly. We're not asking for special treatment. We just want to make sure that when a transgender person goes into a store or a restaurant or beauty supply or wherever they go, they're not getting special treatment. They're just being treated like every Everybody other, else. you know, guy or gal walking through the door. Exactly. Right? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So it's civil rights and equal rights for all, which is really... Right. Imagine if we had a ballot question saying, should we consider taking the vote away from women right. or from African Americans? Right. That would be horrible. The right. worst. And we in that situation now. So I understand the process. We have to vote on this as, as a ballot question. But it's really important to put it in that context. It is. And we you guys can vote, feel yes. proud about it at home. Even if you feel a little uncomfortable because you don't understand the total breadth of what being transgender is or means. You don't have to become yeah, an think. expert. Mm-hmm. The real question is, do you want to be on the right side of um, this conversation around civil rights in our society and if you want to be an advocate for civil rights which I mean this is Brockton we want to be advocates for civil rights we have a very diverse community a yes vote is really the way to go because if you vote the other way you are going with um, the group that really wants to take away civil rights and that's a terrible that's right. ball to start rolling down the hill. Mm-hmm. That's a great way to put right? it. We need to be on the right side of history. We really do. And, and be proud of that. I'm proud of it. I mean, I know that people are, unco- like some people I talk to that don't know transgender people, they take a little while to talk to about it. And once, once they get the same discussion that I got way back when, where um, the person said, okay, Sue can be a... A waitress and you can go there and she can wait on you but then when Sue comes back with her family to eat the owner can say well I know that you were born Mike and I'm not gonna serve you yeah. and it's just so weird that there's that, that one aspect where people are allowed to be prejudiced yes and as we said it's all about uh, equality and fairness and that's really what what everyone is looking for and why is it should it be different for transgender people they right. should well, have the same Thank you, Beryl. That's a great way to end it. So we're (laughs) wrapping up. This 30 minutes went by really fast. Mm -hmm. And I want um, just to say thank you all for watching. And if you have any other questions about this question three, I want you to feel very comfortable to call my office um, at 617-722-2011. And um, we can talk to you about the question and answer any questions that you have about it. So I appreciate you watching, and I hope you stay tuned in the future for similar discussions about question one and question two. But this, we're here. I want to thank Beryl and Vernon for being here, and we're really advocating that Brockton comes through with a yes on one uh, by a wide majority. Yes on three. (laughs) Yes on three. Yes on three. By a wide majority. Thank you for that. And thank you very much for watching Good Government with Michelle Dubois.